Hi everyone, thank you for watching. So today's video is going to be my May book reviews slash May book favorites video. So this is gonna be a video dedicated to all books. If you are new to my channel, then welcome, or if you are even returning and you're wondering why I'm talking about books, it is because that is what I do for my full-time job, I am an author, I own a publishing company, and I also run a book blog. So about once or twice a month, I try to put out a book video that is concentrated on either books that we were reviewing for Chicklet Plus, maybe new books that my company is putting out. For this video, it's gonna be all the past books that I've read in May. I'm just gonna feature each title that I've read and give a small review. And then I also wanna shout out all the five-star books that were featured on my blog, which is called Chicklet Plus. From my review team, I have a handful of other fabulous ladies that review books for me because sometimes with my schedule, I just can't get to all the books, but I still wanna be able to feature them. So I will also shout out all the five-star books that were listed in May. I will leave all the books and their Amazon links linked in the description box below along with the reviews on Chicklet Plus if you guys are book lovers and want to check out any of those books. But yeah, why don't we hop into my May book reviews and favorites. The first book that I read and reviewed is Dangerous Kisses and this is by Alice Lake. This was a historical like romance fiction novel and I don't read historical very often, but I do every once in a while like to dip my fingers into something new in the literary world, and so I thought this would be a fun one to go through because, and in this book too, it's just really fascinating for me to be able to read the historical events, the clothes, the way people spoke, what they ate, just how they acted. You know, obviously it's such a different time than we are in now, but it really is like fascinating to read and see like how things have evolved, it blows my mind. I thought this one was a lot of fun too because there's like a secret society in there, there's a little bit of mystery in there, and some suspense. And overall I thought it was really fun and so I gave that one a four star review and that is Dangerous Kisses by Alice Lake. The next one that I read was Friday Night Brides and this is by Samantha Chase. The cover is what really like drew me in here. I also really really enjoy wedding books, I just... I just enjoy reading them. We basically follow four friends and it was interesting because we do get like a point of view from each of the friends, which at times I thought was just a little bit overwhelming. I actually, when I first like read the synopsis, I thought maybe this was going to be a part of the series and then each friend would get like her own book from her own point of view and her own issues, but we got all four in one, which sometimes could get a little bit overwhelming because so much was trying to be put into one book and so many different lives and situations and relationships and careers and there was definitely a lot going on. I really enjoy books about female friendships as well. That's typically what I write about myself as an author. Is being able to explore female friendships is just incredibly fascinating to me and that's why I like to write about it but also what I like to read about. So I found that interesting. Again, just a little bit too overwhelming and rushed at times but I gave it a 3.5 star to Friday Night Brides by Samantha Chase. The next one that I read and reviewed is The Yoga of Max's Discontent by Karan Baji. Not really positive how to say that name, but the author emailed me himself and asked if I would like to review this book and I kind of thought about it for a little bit because it is written from a male and in a male's perspective. Normally I read more like chick lit women's fiction romance where we have a female author and the book is in a female POV and so I kind of went back and forth like Mm, is this a good fit for me? The title kind of caught my attention a little bit because if you don't know I am also a yogi and so when I saw yoga I was like, eh. I don't know. I read the synopsis and I was like, clearly this is not about like someone taking a yoga class, so let's not get that confused. But it still sounded interesting and again, like I said, I like to step out of my reading comfort zone every once in a while and that's really another reason why I decided to read this one. This book almost read to me like literary fiction, which literary fiction in my own words <laughs> is just a little bit of a slower read, a little bit more serious, really like fast paced or like short sentences and we're moving along at a good speed. It just is a little bit slower, which sometimes can be hard to read, but also too can sometimes be quite enjoyable. We follow Max, of course, who is our main character and he decides to make like a life changing decision, a life changing journey. And it was very, very interesting to watch him as he goes along and there's so much that I can say about this book but I, I don't want to get too long-winded here but 
it was just very interesting to get a different take on life is the best way that I would say it. It was it was very interesting. It the I think it does a good job of grabbing you in the beginning. It doesn't start off with more heavier stuff and finding a different lifestyle. It it did a good job of grabbing you in the beginning and making you want to understand why Max wants to change his life in such a huge way, which I appreciate it and then it was just it was just all interesting from there. That's the best word I can use to describe this one. It was very interesting. The next book is a favorite from our reviewer Liberty and this is for Finding Fraser by Casey Dyer. And from Amazon it says, I met Jamie Fraser when I was 19 years old. He was tall, redheaded, and at our first meeting at least a virgin. He was in fact the perfect man that he was fictional hardly factored into it. That's funny. That's good stuff. Okay, so from Liberty's review, she gave it five stars, obviously, because it is a favorite. She said one word to describe this book, fun. So, so fun, quick, witty, swoon-worthy, and fun. And at one point, she uses the hashtag, my spirit animal. So that sounds amazing. So I will leave the Amazon links plus the link to Liberty's review on Chiclet Plus below. The next one that I read and reviewed is Necklaces and Nooses, and this is by Lana Turner. This is the second book in the Presley Thurman mystery series. I did not get a chance to read the first book, but I have read the second book and since read the third book. And this is a very like quick paced Chiclet mystery. There's not like a lot of gory scenes, like you're not gonna be afraid to go to bed at night and that sort of thing. They're just light-hearted mysteries, I would say. In Necklaces and Nooses, her boss, like she works at a boutique, her boss is murdered in the store and then, you know, just the whole book is trying to figure out who did it and what Presley is going to do with her career and all that good stuff. She's got a romance in there and the romance I actually found very interesting because it didn't play out how I thought it would play out and I can always appreciate that, but I would definitely recommend this series if you like a good chiclet mystery. What I read and reviewed is Wedding Girl, and this is by Stacey Ballas. I'm a big fan of Stacey Ballas, and I enjoy reading her books. Like I mentioned earlier, I enjoy reading books about weddings. It's just something that I gravitate towards. And I really thought that this would be like a hit out of the park for me. And unfortunately, it really wasn't. Uh, I liked that there was a lot of like plot twists in here. You kind of never really know where the story was going to go. But the first chapter, you know, it's just to me, it's so important to pull readers in in that first chapter. And the first chapter for me was a little bit long. There was a lot of like run on sentences that like made me like slow blink while I was trying to read them and there's food is a big part of the book and just the descriptions about food went on and on and on and I enjoy reading about food but like not to that point I guess and then I just didn't always feel a connection with the main character and sometimes I just wasn't very impressed with her and I was kind of bummed out about it because I really thought this would be a book that I would enjoy. Again, like I said, I enjoyed the plot twist. I did enjoy like the baking scenes, some of the secondary characters like Bubbles and Snatch. I enjoyed those very much and got a good laugh out of it. So I gave it a 3.5 star review, but just fell a little short for me. And then the next book to feature is The Lobby, and this is by Randy M. Sherman. And this one, I wasn't really sure what to think of because the genre listed is satire, and I don't read satire a lot. So I was like, hmm, you know, we'll see what this is. So basically the lobby, we get very short clips of a lot of different people. And while that may sound overwhelming, it truly really wasn't. So we're at the Shipley Hotel, which is in San Francisco, and we just follow the comings and goings of like hotel guests and hotel workers. We get little glimpses into, like I said, a lot of different people's lives, but we see how it all reflects at the lobby of the Shipley Hotel. To me, it's kind of, it's a little bit hard to explain, but I just want to say that it's not overwhelming. It was very easy to follow. It was funny to see how different people and situations can become entwined, and I had a really good time reading it for like one of my first forays into satire. I had a great time reading that. I know this book has won a lot of awards, and that is so cool for Randy, and so I gave it a four-star review, and I think it's one to check out. The Lobby by Randy M. Sherman. Another five-star review is for The Weekenders, and this is by Mary Kay Andrews, and our reviewer Allie reviewed this one. Um, in her review, she says, full disclosure, I'm a loyal and devoted fan of this author. I loved every novel she's written and have met her at a few book signings, which is super cool. 
Um, but she says, fangirl feelings aside, this book is a wonderful and perfect way to kick off the beach reading season. So if you love like going to the water, going to the pool, going to the beach, and you like to throw in like a lighthearted book in your bag to read, check out The Weekenders by Mary Kate Andrews. Okay, moving right along. The next one I have is Bon Bons to Yoga Pants, and this is by Katie Cross. This is another one whose cover I was just like... I see you cover. Again, the word yoga is mentioned and I'm like, what? Who's wearing yoga pants? I love yoga pants. I'm wearing yoga pants right now. But this was one that I truly ended up absolutely loving and I thought it was so hard to put down. We follow Lexi who is 22 years old and we just follow her through her journey of, you know, being overweight and not exactly happy with herself. She doesn't have a lot of confidence. And a lot of times, like she meets a guy online and she would think to herself like the only way that this guy is going to be interested in me is if I lose weight because that is what will make me beautiful and she just kept getting stuck on the weight making someone beautiful not her not her personality not what she could bring to a relationship and she does start to like join a gym and she starts to eat better she joins like a, a group you know so they all kind of like help each other out type of thing and she meets people along the way that help her understand you know not only to not turn to food when she has problems because that was kind of her main thing like whenever she had any sort of like emotion she would turn to food and she kind of learned you know not to do that that there's healthier ways to get your emotions out but she also really truly did understand what it actually means to make someone beautiful and that it really doesn't have anything to do with the outside with the way you look with how much you weigh and i just really appreciate it the author's writing and how she really brought me into lexi's world and how I really felt like I was on the journey with the main character and I just thought overall it was such a fantastic read and definitely one I recommend. I gave five stars to Bon Bons to Yoga Pants by Katie Cross. So the next one that I read is Handbags and Hooligans and this is by Lana Turner. So this is the third book in the Presley Thurman mystery series, Necklaces and Nooses, which I talked about earlier. It was book two. I really liked Handbags and Hooligans. This time we actually go to Vegas and one of Presley's friends is getting married. Presley's brother, his girlfriend ends up disappearing and then they're trying to figure out where she went and she find out that she's a school teacher but she's actually been working as a stripper and they're trying to like connect all the dots and see if she's even alive and what happened and putting everything together i love that it was set in vegas i just i, I love books set in vegas as well even though i've only been there twice i consider it like one of my favorite cities it's just so much fun such a cool place to visit and i really appreciate it like giving an insider look on vegas and yeah just a lot of fun to read like I said, these are very like lighthearted, very quick mysteries. I mean, if I was having a slow day, I could probably read these books in a day. They're just very quick and very fun to read. So I gave Handbags and Hooligans by Lana Turner a four-star review. So the next book that I read and reviewed was Down the Rabbit Hole, and this is by Holly Madison. This is a book that I actually read on audio uh, via Audible. If you guys are not familiar with Audible, I definitely think it's something that you should check out. I listen to audiobooks every single day. How I like to listen to audiobooks is when I walk my dog, when we go for like, you know, two or three mile walks outside, I just pop my headphones in. I have Audible, the app on my phone plug my headphones in and just listen and it helps give me something to do while we walk because if I just like had to stare into space we probably would not walk as much and I always know when I'm reading a good book because it's when I make her walk more miles or we go on three to four walks a day instead of our regular two and I'm like let's, let's go back outside you know I want to know what happens in this book or it's really good for cleaning too when we weren't quite having great weather yet I'd actually downloaded this book it was like the weather was starting to turn so I ran to Audible right away and downloaded down the rabbit hole and then we had like kind of crappy weather going on for a while so I would clean, I would clean my bathroom, I cleaned out, I like I cleaned an entire room, threw things away, reorganized things and it was because I had like the drive to do it because I was listening to my audiobook. So that's the way that I use Audible. I just, I really love them. I, I will leave a link listed down below if you guys have not tried Audible but you want to. I have a link for like a free trial. You can get your first audiobook free and listen to it. And if you decide you like Audible, you can sign up to be a member for it. If you don't like it, then you don't have to. You just get your free audiobook. But I'll leave that listed below. But I love Audible. Listen to audiobooks every day. But yeah, the first one that I downloaded for this spring summer season was Down the Rabbit Hole by Holly Madison. And if you're not familiar with it, Holly Madison was one of Hugh Hefner's girlfriends, Hugh Hefner of 
Playboy and the Playboy Mansion. And Holly lived in the Playboy Mansion, I think it was for like 10 years or something, 10 or 11 years. It was a very long time. She was featured on the reality show The Girls Next Door, along with Bridget and Kendra, who were other girlfriends at the time. And I do have a pretty lengthy review on Chiclet Plus, if you guys would like to read it. I, of course, will leave it listed below. And I don't know. This was very, very interesting to read, so I gave it a four-star review. I can tell you guys that. It was interesting to me because I don't understand how Holly wrote it and that was did she not sign like a non-disclosure agreement? How was she putting out things? How was she like naming people and naming certain situations that I can't imagine Playboy would want that to be out there? She signed a waiver but she just didn't care about it. I was just very confused how things like this were coming out. Very eye-opening. There's a lot of information to be learned about how you become a girlfriend of Hugh Hefner, how you're treated as a girlfriend of Hugh Hefner. But was what was most interesting to me probably was seeing how Holly said what a terrible person Hugh Hefner is, how he's manipulative and he thrives on drama and he always would pit the girlfriends against each other, uh, the names that he would call the girls, how he would treat them. Like it was very interesting, and I guess. Another part that I just found very intriguing was that I never saw that on the shows. I watched The Girls Next Door. I watched, I was in college when it came on and I just thought it was like so fascinating and eye-opening as a girl living in central Iowa. Like, whoa, are you kidding me? But I just thought it was very interesting, but I never really saw that side of Hugh Hefner. And then even after Holly left, the girls next door and she went on and did other things. She always seemed very protective of Hef when his marriage was called off, when the whole like runaway bride thing happened. Holly was the one that was so upset about it. How could she do that to Hef and you know he doesn't deserve that. And I was like where was the turning point that she went from I'm in love with this man, I want to have children with this man, sticking up for this man to writing a book that just lays into him like I don't know what happened I think it's weird I think it's a little suspicious and again like just with everything in the story I'm not sure all of it is true but I mean it's Hollywood who knows sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction but it was interesting very eye-opening if you're a fan of Playboy the girls next door you followed any of that you're a fan of celebrities you know you like going to people.com every day this would definitely be an interesting one to read very intriguing. So the next one I have is The Total Package and this is by Stephanie Ivanovich. This was actually the next audiobook that I read or listened to I guess. So I really haven't read much from Stephanie Ivanovich but I hear her name a lot and I saw The Total Package and I saw that we follow a professional football player and we also follow a professional like sports broadcaster which it was always one of my dreams to get into sports broadcasting. I never did and now I just drool over athletes quite frequently, Chris Bryant, Clay Matthews, call me. I thought this would be a really good book for me and unfortunately it, it was just another one that kind of fell short. As I was listening to it on my walks I would find my mind like wandering and a, most of the time with audiobooks, I do a pretty good job of picking out my audiobooks but you know usually I'm, I'm listening and if I miss something like if a loud truck goes by or you know I go by like the garbage truck or something I'll rewind it so I make sure I haven't missed anything and with this one I was just kind of like eh my mind would wander I, you know I'd maybe miss certain parts but I didn't bother to rewind. I didn't understand the romance between the two main characters and that's basically what this book is about. So the couple that we follow met in college, they have like a night together, they go their separate ways and then they actually meet back up. He's the football player, she's the sports commentator and they get together again. You know there's a lot of like situations that happen but basically they're trying to be together again and I just never could understand the romance. I didn't understand why they were each attracted to each other. Um, the female lead, Danny, I actually just had a really hard time connecting with her. I actually connected with him more than her, which doesn't normally happen, but I don't know, a lot of it just seemed like really far-fetched to me. Then there was another secondary character who's another football player whose plot line I was just kind of like, I don't know about that either. Like there was just it wasn't really believable for me on the whole as a novel. There was, you know, some interesting plot points to it, but then there's like a, almost like a mob football coach in there. And it just, it was hard to, to stay invested in, unfortunately for me, but I gave it a three star review. Just wasn't one for me. That was The Total Package by Stephanie Ivanovich. And that is the last book that I have for May.
Alright guys, and that is everything for my May book reviews and May book favorites on Chiclo Plus. I hope that you guys did enjoy this video. Like I said, I do book videos probably one or two times a month. I, I was doing more prior, but it seemed like the beauty videos were just getting so many more views and likes and comments and all that good stuff, but I didn't want to completely get rid of the books because it is what I do for a career every single day. So I always do want to mention them. Also, I did want to say I own a publishing company. It is called Marching Inc. And we have a new book that is releasing on June 22nd. It is called All Access. I will leave the links below. And the book is available for pre-order right now, so I will leave that Amazon link below. The book goes live on June 22nd. If you follow me on Snapchat, I've been talking quite a bit about it because, of course, it's always very exciting to release a new book into the world, especially from a debut author. I am so excited for Liberty to get this book out there, and I know she's excited too. It's a romance women's fiction novel with a bit of a rock star romance in there. So if you like those kinds of books, I hope you will check out all access but other than that i think that is all i have left to say i hope you will give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it please make sure you are subscribed before you go and i will catch you guys real soon in my next video bye